Hello, everybody. Um, this is the Kubert Community Meeting. Um, the date is um, November 24th, 2021. And uh, this is your opportunity to, uh, to bring issues and topics to, uh, to, uh, directly to your developers. Okay, um, I posted uh, the meeting notes out to the chat window. Um, please uh, open up that document and, um, and fill in your attendance. We do track that information, so it's much appreciated. And I'll give you, um, I'll give everyone a minute to fill in agenda items. And in the meantime, Let's check our participants to see if we have any new users. Does not look like it. Usual, usual folks are attending. So let's get right into the, to the meeting notes. I'm gonna hijack the first, uh, the first topic um, with, a couple, with a couple items. Oh, I need to share my screen. Okay. Um, first, first off, um, I created a pull request um, to document um, responsibilities of a of a community manager. Uh, if you could take a look at that poll 154 and uh, post some comments, um, I would really appreciate that, um, and I'm sure the community at large would appreciate that also. Um, so uh, the reason why I created that pull request is because I have resigned my position at IBM Red Hat, and this will be my last community meeting um, that I'll be leading. So oh, wow, that's I'm a sick. surprise. <laughs> yeah, I won't be leaving Kubert. Um, I'm going to the user side. Uh, I accepted a position at NASA, and uh, I've, I. I speak about NASA uh, all the time in, uh, in the reference <laughs> to Kubernetes and Kubert. And uh, my buddy got tired of listening to me and hearing me talk and said, if you wanna do Kubernetes and Kubert at NASA, you're just gonna have to come over here and do it yourself. We're all too busy <laughs> doing our own stuff. So <laughs> one thing led to another and uh, they presented me an opportunity that I just couldn't pass up. Well, then Congratulations. And Thank you. Good luck with the new challenges then. <laughs> yeah, definitely. They're <laughs> like I uh their their interview process wasn't even anywhere technical. It was um just hypothetical um talk about like computing philosophies and they are so far behind. My goodness, they barely even use a, a source code repository. <laughs> it's like, we got, a, we got a lot to learn, guys. <laughs> but uh, it's part of uh, Joe Biden's infrastructure uh, rebuilding plan for the United States. And um, the division I'll be in is climate science. And uh, so that's pretty important. Yeah, so have fun um, there and lucky if I'm lucky if you're still lurking around somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be asking a lot of SR IOV questions. <laughs> <laughs> they have a, a vast array of uh, GPUs and um, legacy Fortran applications that have to run and get access to those devices. It's gonna be interesting. So um, that brings us to the topic of, uh, of a new community organizer, uh, which uh, is still up in the air. Um, I talked to passing the baton back over to Stu and he says, no way. <laughs> and, but he's willing to be a, a first or second string backup in case a, a new person doesn't want to uh, or has uh, something come up and can't handle the the, uh, the weekly meeting. Um, so um, 
The first plan is to rotate running the meeting between a community member, which would mean one of you guys. Um, and the second plan is I was approached by a Kubert user yesterday from Kong, uh, Kong Service Mesh, who has a uh, community management experience and might like to take on the, the baton. Um, she approached me yesterday and we had a big conversation and we're going to be meeting with uh, Josh Perkis on Monday. Sounds promising. Nice to hear. It does. Uh, very promising. She's an ex-Red Hatter. Uh, she would like to get back into Red Hat. And so it may just work out really well for everybody. Well, Chris, you will be missed. Uh, thank you for organizing so far and for helping us with a uh, hopefully smooth transition. Thank you. It's it's been good to be here. Um, I I almost left Red Hat last year. To be honest, um, I was interviewing with uh, Sony PlayStation to run a massive SUP cluster for them, and uh, we couldn't work out remote work. Um, otherwise, it, and Pep, like, Pep was just amazing with uh, the transition. He, I got reorganized to Pep's team who was organizing Kubert last year. And he worked with me on a daily basis to, to make sure that I was okay. And with the understanding that I was still looking outside of Red Hat, just like, just hear me out, like, take a look around here and it's really awesome and this is a great opportunity. And so he kept me on and, uh, and I've had a lot of fun with you guys over the, the couple years. Okay, enough about me. Let's see what the community is doing. Um, Viho support. Um, hey, well, uh, this is actually, I haven't started this thing, but like two weeks or something ago, we had a user that inquired about the status of a couple of PRs to add uh, vhost user support. And we've asked them to send it to, to, to write to the Kubert dev mailing list with a definition of his use cases which which he did and we still haven't um replied back to him so uh, another thing about this for whatever reason like this email got caught by my spam filter i spoke with some people with some colleagues and same thing happened to them i'm not sure why some uh, the emails sent to this list are being marked as spam. Not sure what could be done about this. But uh, yeah, this is what I want to talk about. Like basically, if you're interested in this and we've started a uh, discussion about this like two weeks ago, uh, please help me keep the thread alive. I'm just mentioning it here because this was flagged for us to speak over it like last week and it we didn't get to it. So I just want to make sure this is known and it's being addressed. Yeah, that happened to me too. Uh, thanks Miguel for bringing it up. And I definitely, for instance, definitely want to follow up. Just didn't get to it yet after I finally saw it. <laughs> so yeah. I, I was wondering maybe the, that, that happens when people are not subscribed to the list and are writing to it. I don't know because as you said, there were also other emails which went directly to spam also for me. Yeah. Chris, do you have an idea there? I don't. Um, I was just looking over here at, at, to see if there was anything pending. So, like sometimes uh, an email will get sent in and will require monitor moderation intervention. And uh, if I click on that, 
Oh, um, interesting. <laughs> this, I, I know my, my corporate email address is not subscribed to the mailing list. So it oh, got, okay. it got flagged. Um, now I, after the meeting, I'm going to have to make sure that that, uh, Stu, you got that email about VMware, right? I don't recall. He sent it to uh, our corporate addresses, not the Kubert dev list. So naturally I replied all. And <laughs> I, uh, I got it for instance, but, and I was not explicitly mentioned uh, as a recipient either. So I wonder when it needs permission to get through, but I saw it already. <laughs> It sure looks like it it made the list because we have huh. the URL that we uh we flagged in the notes point directly to their yeah, yeah. groups. It, it did make the list for whatever reason, just like uh my Red Hat managed account flagged this as spam. And I just went and looked at everything on my spam folder, our our emails sent to this list. So I'm not sure what's wrong, but there's something up here. We, uh, we might want to check with Red Hat IT. Maybe they're doing it's a good something. Idea of filing an issue there. Yeah. So I have no problems receiving uh, Kubert uh, emails in my personal Gmail account. But interestingly, I'm part of Ceph Dev and or Ceph users, and that does get flagged spam. Yeah, so let's just um, one of us can take it to, to Red Hat IT and see if we we can solve that for Red Hat part okay. on the list. Yeah, please, please, uh, like, but just let me know what happens, and I'll put it in the in the meeting notes, or yeah, maybe I'll, one I'll you can. There. Okay. Because I'm I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna lose access to my Red Hat stuff come Monday. Right. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Anything else for the agenda before we move to open floor? Okay, Roman, go ahead with the third party integration. Yeah, I want to just say that we finally, after a long time, I, I hope I didn't already talk about this here in the meeting, but I don't think so. After a long time, we have a new repo and that's called keyword slash API. And when you go there, you will see a guide on how you can make use solely of our API structs without having to use our whole client Go script. And if you ever try to use our client Go script or Qubit Go code directly in your project just to get the API definitions, you were probably spending quite some time there trying to resolve Go mod. And I got, we got pretty good results when we look, for instance, as, at the cluster API provider for Qubit. There's a PR open right now. I'm also linking it here. One second. It trims down quite significantly the, the need of external dependencies, which don't make much sense and should help people in the future to stay integrated easier. That's it already. Just wanted to, you to be aware of it. Okay. Do you want to uh, review that pull request at all? Yeah. There, Relevant people are flagged already on the pull request. Um, okay. But uh, uh, but right now, mostly the Apple engineers are taking care of the repo, but they have some bandwidth issues regarding to developer time. But this reminds me of the next topic, and this is the KPK community finally has their first community meeting, and it will and it's on the Kubert calendar. It's next week on November the 3rd. 
Yeah, thank you for mentioning that because I was going to. <laughs> Pardon? I said thank you for mentioning that because I was going to. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, just try to. Can, can I somehow just? I can probably just link. You know, or I don't know how to link an event from the calendar into the Google Doc. I have to check that. But yeah, just that you know, it's uh, next Thursday, and I will link it regarding the date. Are you sure we have that in the calendar? You edit it. I see it on my calendar, so it's there. I, sure, I show cluster API provider as Tuesday. Oh, then it's Tuesday. Then I just. It's Tuesday, yeah, yeah, Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, that's um, it from my side. I just don't understand how to get a link to it, which I can share in the doc. Maybe more details. I'll post that, uh, that uh, event in here after the meeting. Okay. So when I send out the notes, it will, it will be there. 31st. Yeah, this is how far I got. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> yeah, subscribe to the calendar. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, and I have one more item to talk about. Uh, usage survey. Um, if you don't know about this yet, um, we, uh, we deployed a survey last week um, to uh, all of our media channels, email, Slack, Twitter. Uh, if you know of any users, um, please have them fill out the usage survey. Um, that's going to help um, decide the 2022 roadmap. And also uh, the CNCF appreciates uh, current uh, usage data for the project. Um, let's see. Let me get a link to that. Got it. Okay. This is a very simple survey, just uh, basic details on how you use uh, Cooper. Okay. If there's nothing else, then uh, we'll move on to pull request. Felice has the first pull request that needs to be talked about. Um, so nothing special, just uh, somebody has some cycles. Um, so this fix basically a, LAN, um, a permission issue we, that we have with Landisk. Um, basically it updates libvirt uh, that include the fix and uh, add some functional test. So it would be nice to get this merge if nobody has big concern. Okay, seems like uh, Michael was all ha already happy with it. So let's just, uh, just approve it and give and ping Michael to yeah. renew his Yeah, there was behavior. some issue with the CI. So I had to rebase a couple of times also. So that's, it, it boosts the legitim, so. Okay. Thank okay. Michael and approved. Yep. Thank you. And that's the only pull request. Um, I think we have all of our mailing list items covered. No, uh -oh, we don't. Uh, oh, it's wrong. Wrong email group. He says. Um, 
Okay, that takes us back to one week ago, back to community meeting notes and mailing list topics are covered. Time for bug scrub. Yay. Roman, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Just been waiting for that moment. <laughs> Let's do this. Issue 6824. So that's it. Yeah. So for this one, with regarding to log memory, I think we can ask Jordi Jill to have a look because he worked especially in that area with memory locking. What's his GitHub account? Yeah, I'll add him. Oh, it's, it's uh, I think it's a sign. Hmm. Okay, signed him. And, and every week I forget what the triage is. <laughs> yeah, but now you don't have to remember it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> When it has a comment on it. And I'm checking. Looks like his I'm upgrade actually... fixed it. Or not. Okay, so 71 is broken, and what, what was the other one? 6, 8, 20. So the last re release is broken for him, it seems. Oh, my little. So he updated Ubuntu. Hmm, maybe it's related to a change there, like NF tables, B tables or something. I wouldn't. I don't think there would be any reason for the bridge uh, to break if it would be uh, related to the net tables. Maybe, it, yeah. Maybe, maybe it's app app more when he upgraded Ubuntu. He forgot to disable it or something. I'll... Yeah, but we definitely should look into this.
Okay. So Miguel, can I assign you? You ask for my info? Does the app armor need to be disabled? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can. I was looking for the window. Yeah, you can. Roman, does app armor generally need to be disabled like SE Linux? Yeah, well, SE Linux does not have to be disabled, but app armor has to be because we have no special treatment for it yet. Or, I mean, doesn't have to be disabled as such, but at least you have to train it for Qubit first before mm. you can leave it enabled. And, and assign you. Okay. Great, a user guide bug. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's reasonable. The feedback he's giving <laughs> makes sense. Uh, the information is probably in GitHub, right? Yeah, we, I'm not sure if we have this clear separation, the user guide already, we would probably have to at least check. Yeah, I, there's, there's no linking out to GitHub, uh, to GitHub docs. So you, you would have to manually uh, browse over there if you can't find it, the information you want in user guide. So I don't know what to exactly do with this, but I, but I mean, his request makes sense. I just have no clue who to assign it to at the moment. That would be, Chris, that would be typically something I normally use, assign you to. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, I would just be uh, hunting you down to uh, <laughs> to help me out with a document like that. <laughs> so let's see. Uh -huh. who, who, who do we have who's working on the, the homepage at the moment and so on, apart from you? Nobody. Nobody. Hmm. <laughs> um, people have just been picking up bits and pieces as uh, they find things that are missing or, or need to be updated. He seems to have a, be, have a very detailed um, list of items here that he wants to see. So maybe he could build that page. Yeah, I'll write an answer there. Uh, yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, if you give him some hints, that's great. How do you want to tag this one? Uh, trash accepted, since we want to do it. And I think we also have the info, what should be done. It's just a question of who does this, right? Well, I think we have the info. I mean, we know what the user wants to see and why. I think from the perspective. It's clear. Is that good then? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. That's yeah, an interesting one. I won't wonder why. So this one I can straight answer like yes it will be restored if it does it that way because that's the purpose of the operator um i would we should probably ask why he needs that because from a kubernetes perspective we are giving all permissions which all functionalities which we support need so I'll add a trash needs more info. Did you, did you triage that? And now it's trashed. Okay. Uh oh, he analyzed the Kubert code. So we're all in trouble. Suggest, <laughs> I would suggest to just ask Tzvi Kahana. He is 
the one with most knowledge regarding to uh, pretty printing. Do you want to respond or should I respond? Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Sounds more official if it's from you. Six, seven, eight, eight, drain if it's VMs. Uh oh. Okay. Um, how is the coming, it seems? can ask if ah I see the issue now okay uh, it seems like drain is failing uh, it, drain is seeing that there's some parts have more than one of it if they're pending part if you go be, below the three dots the first sentence there are pending parts in node 02 when you go to the right so that we can read it then you, the, this part has more than one pot disruption budget. That's the issue. I think this one is already addressed. The issue is, I think the issue is that there are two pot disruption budgets on the pot and this is fixed in, let me just pull the command. Yeah, so I have the issue found. 
that's 6297 and it should be addressed in oops version is what is that in let me check and since 046 Ah, and it's just one version behind. Mm -hmm. so, do you know if Harvester is shipping Kubert, or yeah, he's installing shipping. manually? Uh, Harvester uh, builds on Kubert or is, is using Kubert as an essential essential part. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, SRI, we do you want to talk about a CI? A CI problem? No, I don't think that's the right audience here. <laughs> okay. Yep, let's move on. Is there another CI? Ah, yeah, this is something which we can and should. You can fix seven, six seven six four seven six four. Let's accept it. That's actually the second report in in a short amount of time regarding to this. Let's just see which one was first. Is it a duplicate then? Yeah. yeah, this is a duplicate of six or get away around. Six eight one three is a duplicate of of six seven six four. Okay. I'll just mark yeah, the discussion happened on the newer one, but um yeah, so I'm closing this old one because the discussion happened on the new one. I will come back. Okay. That's a bummer. He uh, loses his first first reporting rights. Pardon? His first reporting rights since he uh, he had the yeah, earlier issue. Uh, number. Normally, I would take the first and, one. I just wondered because all the discussion and the uh, and everything happened on the newer one. Yeah, it was probably because we uh we skipped bug scrub for a couple weeks. Yeah. yeah. And then we just didn't catch it. So sorry about that, Mac, 1,024. Yeah. Okay. Uh, six, seven, four, eight. Yeah, and I have, I'm closing it right now. Closing six, seven, four, eight, or that previous one? I'm closing the old one. Oh, okay. okay.
Oh, good. He just had a bad copy and bad typing here. It's like, oh no, do we have a, a spelling mistake in the, in the Kubernetes object? I mean, he did it three times. <laughs> so, I'm glad he typed that out manually and didn't copy that in from, from us. Where are you now? Six, seven, Six, seven four, eight. Four, eight. Four, eight. Nice, great. Did you find a solution in the meantime? Could you share the kubelet and and your tender logs? And they're on zero four two, so an upgrade should probably fix a whole bunch of stuff for for them. Uh, responded there uh, it's information okay do you want to recommend an update also since they're so far behind uh, what was their version? I didn't even check. Zero four two. Oh, zero forty two. There may even be device. Yeah, there may even be device plugin bugs. Zero forty-two. Let me just check. Maybe they have. Mm -hmm. What is the list? Do we have more minor releases for that release? Let me just check. Let's see. I think it could at least also try zero forty four. What was the latest latest release? There's zero forty four three. Okay, asked him to do the, to ask me about this too.
it's too cool. Let me just version. Oh, Kubernetes version is also. Oh, one sixteen. Did we even? Oh, that's. Ah. What's uh, uh, yeah? I what's just extend here. <laughs> <laughs> what's Kubernetes as a release cycle? Are they doing monthly also? This is very old and out, and yeah. not supported anymore. Mm -hmm. More there can. They're one twenty two right now. They can, they can easily be device yeah plugin box and the kubelet too you got a yeah. really good response from us this time <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> four <laughs> comments <laughs> well i have to uh yeah we're very thorough we, we missed it for 70 <laughs> days so, so yeah, he needs a little bit of extra care <laughs> Well, let's say uh, that's the last bug that we address. Yeah, sounds good. Or do we? Yeah, let's uh, let's let's uh, return five minutes to everybody. And uh, thank you very much. Um, it's been very fun uh, leading you guys and meeting everybody. And um, I'm probably not going to just like. Uh, just completely ax my uh, my community organization tasks. Um, we'll we'll see how it works out, and uh, any any big changes will uh, will definitely be um, sending notices out to the mailing list. So um, don't be upset if uh, if all of a sudden there's a lot of community related emails on the list. <laughs> Okay, then yeah. <laughs> we just want to keep the community risk. informed and not uh not make abrupt uh back backroom changes. Oh sounds great. Then okay. Thank you, Chris, and see you bye. Okay, thank you everyone. Thanks, Take care. Thanks, Chris.